This is Team 3 with Engineering 400 on our ethical case study. The case that we will be talking about today is the Takata Airbags Recall. Takata Corporation used to be one of the world's largest suppliers of airbags. It was founded in 1933 to manufacture textiles and later on started manufacturing seatbelts. In 1988, Takata began making airbags for automobiles. In 2014, Takata and all of its subsidiaries held a total of 20% of the global airbag market. In April and May of 2013, it was discovered that 3.6 million cars were to be recalled due to Takata-made airbags. But later on, it was discovered that Takata had been hiding problems with airbags for years prior to this date. In June of 2014, seven more automakers announced recalls pertaining to Takata airbags, adding another 3 million cars to the total. Investigations into Takata Corporation revealed that many people had died from non-fatal car crashes in vehicles equipped with Takata airbags. Further investigations revealed that Takata airbag inflators were erupting, throwing metal fragments at the driver. At least 16 deaths and 180 injuries have been linked to faulty Takata airbags. To date, there have been 63 million vehicles recalled due to faulty Takata airbags, and that number is expected to climb to 70 million. Engineers hold a core role in this issue since they were the ones doing the technical work. Engineers at Takata were complacent and went along with decisions that executives made. They falsified test data, performed secret tests, deleted evidence from those tests, and threw out preliminary designs for recall work, all at the command of the executives. Engineers chose to follow directions from higher up instead of acting with integrity, and as a result, Takata made roughly $1 billion from modified reports. A major ethical lapse that Takata engineers had was being knowledgeable of the dangers of the design in 2004, four years before the first recalls began. Much of this testing was done in secret and thus violated several key points in the NSPE Code of Ethics. This includes the first fundamental canon to hold paramount the safety, health, and welfare of the public, acting as a faithful trustee towards the clients, car companies being the clients in this case, and avoidance of deceptive acts. Because of the way Takata handled the recall and their prior knowledge, nearly all of the fundamental canons and rules of practice were broken besides those regarded performance only in areas of competence and the issuing of public statements, mostly due to a lack of any public statements until recalls had begun. In regards to Section 3 of the NSPE Code of Ethics, Takata engineers violated the first three subsections. First, they did not act with honesty or integrity by doing airbag testing in secret when the dangers of their design became apparent. Second, they did not serve the public interest. Rather, they simply waited to see more examples of their airbags fail in order to better understand the issue while also secretly testing. This created deaths and injuries for the public prior to the recall. Lastly, one could very easily argue that they greatly deceived the public by doing all of their testing between 2004 and 2008 in secret and also refusing to release the evidence until far later when under investigation. There are potential changes Takata could have made to avoid ethical violations. For their violation of Section 3.1, they should have been more open and honest with the public about the tests that they conducted on airbags instead of keeping them secret. Also, they should have ensured that the highest quality safety standards were met during the handling of ammonium nitrate, which was cited as a contributing factor in their faulty airbags. For their violation of Section 3.2, Takata should have done everything in their power to alleviate problems with the airbag, which includes a full recall for all affected vehicles as soon as they knew about the problems. For Takata's violation of Section 3.3, they should have avoided deceiving the public about the extent of the problem and the safety of their airbags. 23 people have died and hundreds more have been injured due to Takata's faulty airbags. Although 4,000 cars were initially recalled in 2008, that would only be a drop in the bucket for the 100 million cars later recalled. Takata should have changed their propellant. Even some of the airbags still contain the ammonium nitrate that causes those airbags to explode. Takata should have never introduced these airbags to the market or continued to make improvements until the airbags were no longer dangerous. Even though they were pressured by upper management, professionals such as engineers should have disallowed Takata from releasing their airbags as a finished product. The NHTSA, or the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, oversees the compliance of automakers and suppliers in regards to safety standards as well as the safety recall requirements. The recalls on the Takata airbag started in May 2016. 
Vehicle manufacturers have been required to have parts available for different priority groups, which were based on the risk of injury or death to those in them. These 12 different priority groups have had different deadlines set for when the parts must be available by. The deadlines for groups 11 and 12 are set for March 31st, 2020 and September 30th, 2020 respectively. Vehicle owners affected by the malfunctioning airbags may still file suit against Takata. In 2017, Takata pled guilty to criminal misconduct and reached a $1 billion settlement with the U.S. Department of Justice. Takata filed for bankruptcy in Japan on June 25, 2017. Those surviving assets were sold in April of 2018 to key safety systems, and they were based in Michigan in the United States. The Johnson Safety Systems Company is a result of the merger between key safety systems and the Takata Corporation. As a corporation, it's safe to agree that Takata should have never released their airbags due to the dangers of ammonium nitrate. As professionals, engineers should have issued a warning sooner and stopped the original design from reaching the market. This was a company-wide failure, and it started with the ethical malpractice of the engineers and went all the way to the top of the corporate ladder. Engineering tests should be public knowledge, including its failures to halt deceptive acts by a company. Correctly weighing the ethical decisions and the design choices concerning safety should be paramount to an engineer, as upholding the safety of the public is our top priority.